So good morning, everyone. So shall we begin? Shall we begin? Okay. So ready to begin? Yes, sir. So can you see my uh, slides? Okay, yes, fine. Yes, sir. Okay, so today we are going to discuss the second unit in the third block of uh, MSW012. So that unit is particularly about the career, marriage and family. Yesterday we were talking about what marriage is, what are the types or what are the characteristics, uh, what all adjustment level should be improved uh, to have a better successful marriage life, etc. And now we are moving on the career, marriage and the family. So we all know that adulthood, that is the longest period in the total lifespan of a human being. So based on certain physical and psychological changes occurring at the predictable uh, times. So this particular, the longest stage is divided again into three. So they are the early adulthood, middle and late adulthood. Uh, we know that we have to face a lot of challenges during this period and uh, uh, there are many things uh, that will be uh, disturbing us and uh, distracting us in the form of a uh, lot of uh, uh, difficulties due to the role that we have to play. So we may have to play a number of roles, multiple roles in this particular period. So among that, this is one of the main area that is the work life. Okay, so that is one of the major role that we have to play in this uh, particular time period. So we know that the uh, in young or early adulthood, uh, a person's career or job, so that become a very significant part of the person's self identity. Uh, here, he tries to define his he or she tries to define uh, uh, his or her uh, self by what work he is uh, doing or what they do. Uh, each job uh, that carries uh, with its set of components, so that must uh, be adapted for the successful adjustment of the work life or the workplace. Uh, what are the important? Uh, for may adjustment that a person has to practice to uh, for the successful adjustment of a uh, work. So the first one is the use of technical skills. We all know that. So we should have the basic, the necessary, the fundamental knowledge about the technology. So that will help us to ease our work. So we have to get updated with the technological advancement and we should familiar with the use and application of the technological uh, uh, tools or the technological devices for the uh, successful completion of our work. Then the development of uh, authority relationship is there. It's a kind of uh, 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 great uh, uh, character that we have to uh, process, you know, when the development of the authority relationship means. So when we are in a working in an organization or in a company, there will be a structure of relationship will be there. So there are many people superior to us. There are some people they are working under the guidance of our own self. In that sense, definitely we need to have a authority relationship and that relationship should be professional and that has to keep all the care attributes of a profession. So the next thing is that we have to adjust is uh, the adapting to special demands and hazards. You know that the, there could be a changing environment. The work environment could be always changing because of many people are there. I'm not only the person who worked there. Okay, there are many people. Uh, there will be a lot of departments, a lot of things. So there are. Uh, we have to adapt that particular uh, environment and the special demands and assets that uh, arise in the particular area. Then the development of uh, personal relationships with the peers. Okay, so when we join with the company, definitely we have got a, a lot of people to get in touch and uh, uh, there we are trying to develop some sort of personal relationship with our colleagues or our peers 
uh, and with our uh, fellow beings, etc. So that's the kind of relationship, a professional relationship with the peers could be uh, developed there. Then uh, we have to think uh, selection of the vocation or the work in this particular stage. So many young adults, they have uh, had little or no training for a particular uh, line of work to go through a period of uh, trying one job after the another because they may not be uh, able to, they may not be getting a proper career guidance or some advices regarding the selection of their job if one after another. Uh, in that case, the job hopping that is a common, a very much common in young adult too. job hopping, that means they are trying to find some jobs. Okay, uh, there are certain factors that uh, make the vocational choice difficult for the uh, young adulthood. Uh, so what are the factors uh, like the increasing number of different kinds of work to choose them? So there are a lot of jobs before them. Okay, so there are a lot of types or kinds of jobs. So they are having some uh, confusion what could be choose or what they have to choose for their livelihood. Then the next uh, factor is the rapid changes uh, in the work skills due to increased use of automation. So we know that there are a lot of uh, technology or advancement that's happening in the uh, present uh, job spheres. So here there is a rapid changes in the work skills due to the increased use of automation and use of the machines and equipments or the devices. So that will be another factor that lack of flexibility in work timings uh, which especially affects women who must adjust their schedule to their home responsibilities so being a person uh, being an adult definitely they have to play some uh, other roles apart from the breadwinner or apart from the work so or there could be some sort of flexibility they feel difficulty to balance their household work and the uh, real work that they are doing uh, for earning. Then the next one is the long and uh, costly preparation that which uh, that makes the career shifts impossible. Uh, there's sort of some costly preparation to get a career. That means the, they have to spend enough money to get a high qualified profession uh, to. Uh, be a doctor or to be an engineer it's not an easy task they have to uh, spend a lot so most of the people are uh, not able to spend a lot for their good profession then sexual stereotypes of a certain jobs such as teaching and nursing as women's work and aviation and engineering as men's work so there could be some sexual uh, stereotypes that only uh, women are doing nursing or teaching uh, and also the aviation engineer that all belong to the uh, men's work. It's a kind of uh, uh, discrepancies or the what you call the discrimination among the particular fields. Then lack of uh, security in work, uh, especially in seasonal jobs. So they find uh, themselves insecure in work. Uh, when they are doing some sort of seasonal jobs. That job may not be there for a long time. Okay, so that will affect their earning and their meeting of their expenses, then they will be in trouble. So, so uh, lack of security in the seasonal jobs. Then ignorance of one's own capacities due to the poor job experience or vocational guidance. So they are not getting proper job guidance or they are, may not be getting the uh, exact job experiences therefore they are becoming ignorant about the feasibilities and possibilities or the capacities that they have to find a to get a job then insufficient education or training for available jobs same thing because lack of education could be a reason or lack of training that could be a reason for the uh, them to get the jobs that is available Okay, then unrealistic values and expectations concerning job prestige and autonomy. So there are certain uh, group of or certain amount of values that are unrealistic. So the expectations could be also unrealistic that will make uh, because they think that this job is only reserved for some of them. Okay, uh, and they only uh, get the job uh, because of the uh, prestige and autonomy that existing in the structure.
So all these are some sort of uh, uh, factors that make a vocational choice very much difficult for the young adults. So the psychological importance of what people uh, do that also varies and it is important to understand the difference between uh, a career and a job so many people pursue a job to earn their living to have their uh, to find i mean for their livelihood so therefore the job might not have much value uh, on their psychological perspective so they just work for their earning for their livelihood but career is a way of life chosen by an individual it's a way of life career could be considered as a way of life that has to be uh, chosen uh, deliberately and uh, with a amount of intelligence so this career will have a significant value as uh, uh, it, it is the central aspect of their life so not everyone has the opportunity to choose a career so the vocational adaptation to young adulthood may vary based on whether one sees it as a career job the, in the middle age is more characteristic of stable and long standing jobs and there will be less of job hopping so in the middle age so when we think of the uh, um, young adulthood so there are some sort of misunderstanding about the career uh, selection then stability of vocational selection is there the job stability again that depends largely on four factors so the job selection that is based on four factors the, or the stability of the job that uh, uh, is based on certain factors like job experience then personal interest then vocational values and economic necessity so the first one is that is job experience what does it mean so the adults with the job experience can make more satisfactory choices and they know what they need to anticipate in a job and it gives them an insight into the features of a job that will be or will not be of their liking so sometimes they realize that this job is not apt for me so this is not good for me to continue with so some sort of anticipation or assumption uh, related to a job so that gives them an insight okay uh, regarding the uh, features that influence the job and how that will be uh, uh, positively or negatively impact them okay then uh, personal interests that are taken into consideration to the choices of jobs it's my personal interest uh, of selection uh, of selecting a job so here adults lie less likely to change jobs uh, than when factors other than the personal interest have motivated their choice. So this is one of the major factors that help them to choose their uh, uh, jobs, choices. Then vocational values could be there. The vocational values are even more important as studies have shown that regardless of their occupation. So the worker has different meanings uh, for different people. Uh, for some, it might be a source of prestige and the social recognition uh, for some uh, others it may be an opportunity for a social participation for some others a job could be a vocation could be a volunteerism and creative self-expression and so on some proves their identity through this uh, job so these are the values that they are having uh, their own perception to their own jobs the economic necessity so we work for money that will help us to uh, continue with our expenses or uh, our livelihood. So the economic necessity also is a factor to choose a particular occupation. So as they grow older, they often attach more value to the stability of job and the independence that provides them uh, than they do know than they do to more interesting work or higher salaries. So this shift is more profound. Uh, sorry, more uh, pronounced as adults approach in middle age. Then women tend to be less stable in their vocation choices, mainly because uh, the married women who constitute a large proportion of the female labor force uh, often must adapt their vocational interest uh, to their home responsibilities or, or to the changes in their husband's jobs. So they are dependent. In that sense, they may not be having stability in their vocational choices then the adjustment to work so when a choice is made about the work so they must adjust 
to the work itself uh, to the hours of the work day or uh, work week uh, then or to their co-workers and superiors or to the environment in which the work is done and to the restrictions the work imposes on impose on their personal lives etc so the factor that influences the adjustments to work uh, most is the workers attitude it's my attitude that makes me to have a better to practice or to develop the adjustment with that particular job so uh, the society that uh, maintaining work attitudes the workers whose attitudes are society maintaining they have little or no interest in their work uh, uh, and uh, they gain little personal satisfaction from it so their main interest is in the uh, paychecks and the job is regarded as a heavy and unpleasant burden and look forward to their time of uh, retirement so most of the people there are focusing on their high payment so they keep on uh, uh, focusing on their paychecks only that is not exactly uh, welcomed by the organizations as well we know okay the ego involving work attitudes then workers who find their job uh, ego involving uh, that derive great personal satisfaction from them that's ego involving work attitude so because work means uh, so much to workers with such attitudes they may become preoccupied with it to the exclusion of other interests and uh, uh, dread the time when they will be forced to retail so there are certain conditions that affect the vocational adjustments uh, for men and women uh, that differ for both men and women for men the what could be the conditions so they feel satisfied if the job allows them to play the roles they want to play so they will be satisfied and adjust well to their work okay so uh, the according to their mindset according to their wavelength according to their capability according to their wish and will they're getting the job or the role that they want to play so they will be happy then then the satisfaction is attained if men feel that their jobs make use of their abilities and training then it depends on how they are just to the authority so the pay raises or the increased uh, amount of their pay scale or lack of them that could also influence their adjustment so they will be working a lot but they're not recognized with in that context the uh, the payment is not given according to that definitely they will get uh, they will be uh, disappointed and they feel difficult to adjust with the jobs then if we think of the women uh, for women a uh, job should suit their abilities the training and their expectations so they feel less comfortable in uh, dead end jobs where there are no promotions or appraisal based on their performances so uh, when they need to form a stereotyped occupational aspirations that means the aspirations below their capacities so when they are discriminated in their occupations uh, the difficulty of managing the double work load at work and at home simultaneously all these things all these factors or these conditions that affect the vocational adjustment among women then middle age adjustment to the changing working conditions uh, certain changing uh, work conditions have affected the middle aged workers in the present vocational world it is uh, proven okay so the unfavorable what are they it's kind of unfavorable attitudes social attitudes uh, then hiring policies then the compulsory uh, retirements that is fixed by the uh, the policy is fixed by the organization then the dominance of big business uh, then the uh, relocation so they struggle with all these aspects and they having a lot of problems with this uh, due to these reasons then the appraisal of vocational adjustment is there so we know that we have might have been undergone with this appraisal uh, of vocational adjustment so the appraisal of adjustment to work can be uh, judged uh, in uh, mainly three criteria so achievement of 
achievements. One could be the achievement, and the second one is the voluntary change of jobs. Third one is the satisfaction that depends on the opportunity to choose the work. So here the achievements are like promotions or pay hike or appreciations or awards and achievements of the personal goals. The voluntary change of jobs or job hopping that is due to the problems like the boredom, lack of progress, uh, dissatisfied work environment, etc. Then what could be the satisfaction that they get, which depends on the opportunity to choose the work, meeting their needs and interests, then uh, stimulating the work, career oriented, educational level, their growth potential, stereotypes, then occupational stress, uh, working conditions, and attitudes of the significant people all those things are there in the uh, that leads to the satisfaction so with that we uh, conclude the work life about the explanation about the work life that happens in the uh, adulthood especially in the first two phases of adulthood area that is the marriage and family so we have been discussing it in detail yesterday but still uh, we can have some uh, inputs from the text again. So marriage is one of the most intense human relationship. We know that. We realize it. So the quality of this relationship uh, is continuously redefined by the spouses and uh, that is uh, potentially uh, crucial to their overall experience of the family life. Then the universality of the social institution of marriage implies that it gives a chance for every individual to marry at some point of their life. In all cultures, the age of marriage is legally determined and that gives a legal start to the adulthood. So both marriage and the family has a long standing history of its own. Okay, then selecting the partner. Uh, in the traditional way, the choice of partners is mostly done by the parents or the elders of the uh, young adults based on a certain parameter such as the physical appearance, their family background, their cultural similarity, religious values, economic and educational compatibility. But nowadays, you know what's happening with that. So there has been changing trend of the adult choosing one's own partner and they decide to commit oneself to the uh, their own partner their own partner so basically the commitment to a partner is a gradual process so which involves moving through a series of phases so that leads to uh, deepening attraction and commitment so there are certain phases uh, first phase is the opportunity uh, physical attraction valued behaviors then in the phase two we can see the positive disclosure the rapport the sexuality the value concerns and saline homogeneity and similarity in phase three we can see the road compatibility empathy in phase four uh, uh, the right to one relationship commitment escalators uh, of marriage okay then the marriage we know it's a long-term uh, socially accepted commitment and that helps the individual in having deep and intimate relationship then there we can see uh, diversity in companionship. Uh, uh, it refers that although marriage is a, a major developmental task for young adults, increasing a uh, number of them are also choosing alternatives to the traditional pathways of marriage and children. So many choose to remain single, okay, or go through divorce and remarriage. These are the changes that's happening now. Then become a part of the step family and develop a committed relationship with the partner of the same sex or cohabitate some sort of living together without having the constitution or the tie of marriage. So there are many ways as the young adult can meet their needs of companionship. That could be uh, included. All these things shows the diversity in companionship. Then uh, cohabitation. So that's the open living together of unmarried couple. So it's a kind of open living together of unmarried couple so most such couple uh, live uh, together for relatively short time so less than uh, sometimes less than two years or three years before uh, which they either marry or separate because it's a, a testing time for them whether the character is okay whether his uh, behavior is okay 
or her behavior is okay so once they are okay each other uh, uh, okay with their own characteristics and their own satisfaction definitely they will uh, sometimes they will get married or they'll continue to cohabitate or else they will separate so for her, some cohabitation serves uh, as a trial marriage so it's a trial marriage and for others it's a temporary or permanent uh, alternative to marriage then living with someone helps uh, many young adults to learn what is involved in an intimate relationship so they will learn uh, something related to the uh, uh, intimate relationship and to grow as a person so this kind of uh, intimation that will help them to grow as a person so it may also help some people to understand what they want in a mate and a marriage so what are the uh, uses of or what are the things that we get from the uh, mate and a marriage some people are really uh, focused with all these things then cohabitating has challenges of its own as well okay some of uh, which are similar to those of newly work uh, adjusting to the intimacy uh, working out sexual relationship over dependency on the partner missing what one did when alone and seeing friends less so other problems which are unique to this relationship are explaining the relationship to parents so it's very difficult to explain such a relation to the traditional parents relatives uh, who are from a very orthodox family then uh, discomfort about the ambiguity about the future and desire for a long term commitment from the partner all things are there in the cohabitation then gay and lesbian relationship we know that i don't want to discuss much about it then the singlehood uh, some people choose to remain single okay they are free from all the uh, miseries and uh, uh, agonies that may happen because of their marital relationship or in their experience previous experiences or the experiences from others might have uh, taught them to be continue as a single so they like being alone and they prefer not being with others much of time so others end up being single as they do not find the right partner some people they used to tell that okay i haven't find found a person who is very much suitable for me or apt for me etc so when they decide to marry uh, or because they are in a relationship with a partner who decides to marry so in some uh, cases the loss of partner due to the death or even some sort of uh, separation like divorce uh, that is a cause of singlehood unlike before the people are freer to decide whether to marry or to decide their lifestyle okay do you uh, agree that uh, singlehood is more good than cohabitation or marriage is uh, very good or marital relationship is very good than uh, both these cohabitation and uh, singlehood what's your comment which which gives a person more peaceful and happiness life well, i believe you can realize it uh, it's uh, you know it, it's a very personal uh, thing it would depend upon uh, yeah. individual individual from, from the you social know, experiences I... that you have gained what could be the comment either uh, to stay single or to be uh, to practice this cohabitation or i'll i'll married. again say uh, it, it's based it on the person's be, attitude absolutely it, it, it's it, it's a personal thing uh, a, okay. a personal choice but there are a lot of misconceptions within it. that's why i'm asking you to get some enlightened new okay leave it uh, misconceptions misconceptions do clear you know once you go ahead and experience it yeah so uh you know if you experience it then misconception also goes away but uh yeah you know um if you if you talk about it then both sides of the coin have their uh you know benefits and uh positives and ideas will be there yes it depends on individual to individual how an individual takes it so uh, that's that that's my uh, observation okay so if you look at some uh, popular figures in the society uh, they may belong to the film industry or to the politics or even to the business so we can see some sort of uh, uh, strange experiences from them right one marriage one living together then again next marriage etc so 
uh, uh, towards the end, they want to get, uh, they want to practice this singlehood. That will give them more uh, meaning to their life. That's what their experience is. But still, they are the common figures or the popular figures. Okay, uh, maybe because of their experiences, they're telling like that. Then the marital adjustment. We are going to discuss that now. The marital adjustment. Uh, we know that one selection of the partner and the family lifestyle has been made. The first few years uh, of the committed relationship involves a process of mutual adaptation. Then regardless of the type of the family, the marital adjustment uh, is one of the most difficult adjustments uh, that adults make. Then there are certain conditions uh, that uh, contribute to the difficulties in marital adjustment, uh, such as the limited preparation for marriage, like lack of sex information, lack of skills in domestic activities, child rearing, getting along with in-laws, and money management. So I have uh, experienced when I uh, used to give the counseling for a marital, uh, young marital couple. So I came to know that, OK, many of the girls, they are getting married without having any preparation. So their experiences will be very, very uh, pathetic. And uh, they have to realize or they have to face the, a lot of problems in their life due to the lack of preparation. So that's the thing. Then the lack of skills in domestic activities, child rearing, getting along with windows and money management, all those things should be. Uh, they should get some sort of uh, uh, information or time uh, to plan with all those things. Then the second condition could be the roles in marriage for both men and women have changed. Then the early marriage and the parenthood before finishing education and becoming economically independent. Uh, then the other condition could be the unrealistic concepts of marriage of the adults who spend their lives in school and college with little or no work experience at all. Then romantic concepts of marriage developed during adolescence, losing one's identity to other that also have been found to be an impediment to the marital adjustment. For example, we can tell that a woman feels that a social group regards her just a housewife. Marriage gives a role of only a housewife. So even though she has been a successful career woman, but Things are like that. All these uh, are the certain conditions that contribute to the difficulties in marital adjustment. Then there is another adjustment that it is an adjustment to mate. Okay. Adjustment to mate. There could be interpersonal relations, uh, uh, relationship skill. Uh, that, could be the in, uh, that could be inevitable for the better marital adjustment. This in, interpersonal relationship skill so the more experience in interpersonal relationships one have had in the past uh, the greater social insight they have developed and the greater willingness to uh, cooperate with others the better that they will be able to adjust to, to each other in marriage so this particular uh, skill the interpersonal relationship skill that will uh, help them to add practice better adjustment with the people okay then far more important in the marriage life marriage uh, is the ability of husband and wife to relate emotionally to the, each other and to give and receive love that could be the success of the marital relationship what uh, that is to the ability of husband and wife to relate emotionally to each other and to give and receive love. So they have to communicate the love and they have to relate emotionally to each other. So the lack of expression of affection uh, that can take in two forms, the lack of indication of, the, of affection or lack of support and appreciation for the spouse's efforts and uh, uh, behaviors. So there could be a sort of acceptance a complimenting nature, all those th things should be there. If the uh, husband does something good, the wife has to compliment and uh, uh, what do you call, give a, some sort of reward in the form of love. And uh, the same thing sh should happen 
when the wife does something as well. Then effective communication is also inevitable to establish intimacy and marital satisfaction. So this effective communication is not there in the family. They are, people are in two uh, islands because they are in two extremes. If they are not communicating each other, their marital relationship will be uh, not uh, alive or the dynamic or that will, will not be any productivity in that marital relationship. Then uh, sexual adjustments are there. Sexual adjustments. Here, this is a more uh, complex thing that we have to discuss. So this is uh, unquestionably uh, one of the most difficult adjustment to the marriage. And it is the one most likely to lead to marital discord and unhappiness. If it is not satisfactorily achieved, uh, usually the couple has had less preliminary experiences related to the sexual adjustment than to others. And they may be unable to make it easily and with a minimum of emotional tension. So there are many factors that influence the sexual adjustment to marriage, uh, like the attitude towards sex. People think, or many of the couple, they do not know what the uh, real nature of sex and sexual practices, but uh, they are greatly influenced by the way men and women receive uh, sex information during their childhood and adolescence. They, most of the people they do not, did not have uh, chances for the sex education and all. So it lacks a lot of immature or it creates a lot of immature behavior uh, in the context of sexual matters in their family life. So once the unfavorable attitudes have developed, it is difficult to eradicate them complete, completely. Then the past sexual experience will be there. So the way adults and peers reacted to the masturbation or petting and premarital intercourse when men and women were younger, and the way they themselves felt about them affected their attitude towards the sex then sexual desire uh, sexual desire develops earlier in men than in women and tends to sorry and uh, tends to be persistent while that of the women is periodic fluctuating during the menstrual cycle so these variations affect interest in and enjoyment of sex which in turn affects the sexual adjustments early marital sexual experiences so it is the belief that the sexual relations produce states of ecstasy unparalleled by any uh, other experience causes many young adults to be so disillusioned at the beginning of their marital lives that later sexual adjustments are difficult or impossible to make then the attitude towards the use of contraceptives uh, the friction and emotional conflict will be less if the decision on use of contraceptives is mutual. Then there are factors that are affecting the sexual adjustment in the middle age uh, that are different from the young people's. Uh, there is a sharp rise in sexual dissatisfaction in the post-parental years after uh, uh, low points during the years of school aged and the teenage children. So as the children begin to leave home, the la launching stage, the sexual satisfaction between the parents increase, while poor sexual adjustments does not necessarily lead to marital unhappiness and divorce. So that would contribute to the dis uh, enhancement, enchantment or that so often occurs during the middle age. So there are some poor sexual adjustments in middle age that could be mainly due to the factors explained like uh, the difference in the sexual drive at this time. So the studies of the pattern of development of the sex drive have shown that uh, male sex drive is stronger in adolescence and reaches its peak earlier than in females. Then the woman's sex drive and interest in sex by contrast becomes stronger as she approaches middle age. So there is a, uh, that's something we have to focus. Uh, then men become concerned with the loss of their sexual vigor. So they may develop feelings of inadequacy 
or go to the opposite extreme of having multiple relationships with others to prove that they are still uh, virile. Then the decision of some middle-aged women to have another child complicates their adjustment to their husband who may not be prepared for a baby at the middle age. In the middle-aged woman who is little satisfied from uh, intercourse or it is no longer interesting to her husband that may take initiative in stopping it uh, which uh, intensifies unhappiness in the relationship. So in spite of all these difficulties involved, uh, most middle-aged uh, women and men uh, make satisfactory sexual adjustment. Then the next adjustment that we have to do or uh, discuss is financial adjustments. The, it is something related to the money management, how capable, capably uh, the couple is able to manage the financial affairs in their life. So with marriage, the financial side takes a new turn uh, where the earning adults start moving from financial independence to the interdependence so it's an effective money management plan uh, that is very much required for the satisfactory financial adjustment in the family life so money or lack of its lack of it has a profound influence a bad negative impact on adults adjustment to marriage so especially uh, women uh, recent not having control of the money needed to run a home and they find it difficult to adjust to living on their husband's earning after being accustomed to spending their own money. So many men also find financial adjustments very difficult, particularly if the wife worked after they were married and they must then must stop with the arrival of the first child. Uh, some sort of uh, economic problem will arise. Then not only their total income is reduced but the single earning must be uh, must then cover a wider area of their expenses uh, all those things we know we are uh, aware of all these things then adjustment to in-laws that is the next form uh, this is also when we think of some families or from uh, the relationship of some couple it will be very interesting okay so we don't have time to uh, share all those things here but we can get some fundamental information uh, based on the uh, uh, studies that have been made in this area so adjustment to in-laws so marriage is not just the union of two individuals definitely it is the individual or the union of uh, to families as well. So while the adult adjusts with the mate, the simultaneous efforts need to be put to adjust with the spouses, family members, and the relatives too, who are people uh, of different ages, different interests, the ranging by babies to the elderly, who often have different interests and values and sometimes mark the uh, different educational, cultural, social, and religious background. Okay, so both the husbands and the wives uh, must learn to adjust to their in-laws if they are to avoid the frictional relationship with their uh, spouses. So certain factors that we can see or that uh, these factors influence one's adjustment with in-laws uh, in the young adulthood. There are stereotypes. So the widely accepted stereotype of the typical mother hilo that lead to an unfavorable mental sets uh, even before marriage. So unfavorable notions about the elderly that be, being bossy and interfering can lead to in-law problems. Then desire for independence, that could be the next factor. So here young married adults tend to resent advice and guidance from their their parents even if they must accept financial aid so nowadays young married adults they have better opportunities to be uh, independent as they are away from their families for pursuing their career then family cohesiveness uh, it was when one spouse devotes more time to the family and relatives than the spouse marriage adjustment becomes difficult uh, this is particularly more as the number of children is less uh, in the families and thus it becomes an important uh, for the person to make them feel parents are cared for. Then social mobility could be the next factor. So young adults who have risen above the status of their families or that of their in-laws uh, may want to keep them in the background. 
okay uh, many parents and relatives uh, they resent this and hostile relationship with the young couple as well as the marital uh, friction are likely to develop then care for care of elderly relatives so caring for the elderly relatives is an especially complicating factor today because of the present unfavorable attitude towards older people and the belief that the young people should be independent especially once they have children so this area need to be discussed uh, more but still uh, we know if it's in the uh, uh, students or just uh, regular students who are uh, having much experience in the family definitely we would have spent more time for that but i think all of you are grown up and you are almost all of you are uh, in the adulthood so definitely there is no need of any discussion on it you know the value of elders okay then financial support of in-laws so when young couple must contribute to or assume responsibility for the financial support of in-laws it can and often this lead to a frictional marital relationship as the spouse uh, reasons having to make the sacrifices of wants or even needs to make their set possible all these are some sort of uh, kind of certain factors that influence one's adjustment with the in-laws in the young adulthood. Then adjustment to the parenthood. Uh, we all know that parenthood is the most important criterion of the individual's transition to maturity and uh, responsibility. During this period, people will be more uh, they'll get more matured and more responsible so while parenthood brings with it uh, many uh, gratifications it can also be regarded as a crisis this period definitely create a lot of crisis in life as it necessitates major changes in the attitude values and roles so with the arrival of a child the family is temporarily upset and all family members are under varying degree of stress Okay, while both the husband and wife must make marked adjustments in the patterns of their lives because once the baby arrives, definitely they uh, experience a lot of changes in their pattern of life. All the uh, factors will get changed that previously determining their life. Then the single parent families are on an increase in the recent years, not only because of death of a parent, but as a result of divorce, the illegitimate babies or adoption so wherein uh, whether in a single or two parent family there are marked variations in the adjustments men and women must make to parenthood uh, some of the adjustments that they, ha they have to make uh, are uh, the attitude towards pregnancy so the women's attitude towards parenthood is colored by her physical and emotional condition during pregnancy but in most cases it improves with the babies birth the then the attitude towards the parenthood the adults adjust better to parenthood if they want children uh, because they feel they are essential to a happy marriage rather than because of family or social pressures so age of parents the young parents tend to take their parental responsibility lightly and not allow interfere too much with their interests and pressures. So the older parents, they tend to be more anxious and concerned. So the younger parents often make better adjustments than the older parents. The next thing is the sex and number of the children. So if they have children of the sex they prefer and the number they consider that's ideal, uh, adjustment is better. Then parental expectations. If parents have a dream, uh, dream of a child concept, their adjustment to parenthood will be uh, affected by how well the child measures uh, up to this ideal. Then the feelings of uh, parental adequacy. Uh, there could be conflicts about child training methods that lead to the confusions and to feelings of anxiety about doing the job well. Okay. Then attitude towards the changed roles. So the parenthood means both the men and women, they must learn to play family-centered rather than pair-centered roles. So they have to play some new role after the arrival of a baby. So how they react to this role, that change have 
profound influence on their adjustment to parenthood when a baby is born a new parents also born so the child's temperament uh, the children who are easy to manage and who are responsive uh, and affectionate that make parents feel rewarded for the time and effort spent on them so all these are some of the important uh, adjustments that we have to focus on the parenthood then developmental stages of family okay parenthood has a stage uh, wise development at the each stages of child's life uh, demands on the parent changes uh, infants require constant care and attention so the preschoolers require educational toys and interaction with the peers so they can spend a great deal of time independent Uh, play but under supervision so early and middle school age children they require parental reassurance about their skills talents and fears uh, etc then there could be some adjustments to the uh, grand parenthood uh grand parenthood so as they approach the middle age the parents turn uh, grandparents and that makes it another to all together so the grandparents play a less important role in the lives of their children they won't influence them much and the grandchildren than they did the than they did in the past not only because they live uh, farther apart but also because many middle aged women take jobs after their children marry and thus are not uh, available as uh, babysitters for grandchildren so there are in most cases we can see that grandchildren can take care of the wife if they are healthy but if they are not healthy definitely uh, the baby will be sent to a crash or a day care babysitters so the influence that we get from the grandparents are really uh, valuable and really appreciable you know appreciable uh, we can say that lot of experiences from our current world so what could be the role of uh, grandparents in making or in forming a child's life so the formal role where they follow a hands off policy as far as care and discipline are concerned then the fun seeking role where they maintain an informal playful relationship with their grandchildren then the surrogate parent role uh, they play that as well uh, when they assume responsibility for the care of grandchildren in the event of divorce or death of a Uh, parent if the mother has to work or when the parents want to take a short vacation from the children the grandparents act as a uh, play a role of a surrogate parent then the reservoir of family wisdom so that could be a role to dispense a special knowledge to the grandchildren or teach them certain skills values and moral affairs etc the grandfather is usually uh, more active in this role so distant figure role also they are played by the grandparents that is assumed when they appear only on special occasions and have a fleeting and infrequent contacts with the grandchildren as they are geographically or socially remote okay so that's about that uh, role then we move on to the next unit that is unit 3 that is parenting skills so all these informations are not new to us we know that but we have got a structured explanation uh, based on various studies that is presented now only the highlights not everything no additional explanations uh, needed because we experienced it okay we know what it is only the standardized definitions that is not familiar to us regarding all these things all these concepts okay i think that we can continue now okay since you do not you don't have any doubts and enough time you are getting to relax so let me continue yes sir okay thank you so now we discuss here parenting so parenting that is defined as the process of promoting and supporting the physical emotional 
social and intellectual development of a child from infancy to adulthood so what are things we are supporting the physical emotional social and intellectual development so with that could be the assignment or the assigned task of a parent to fulfill in their uh, role parenting involves a careful attention to every need of the child aiming at the holistic development of the child so what are the essential parenting responsibilities first one the providing safe environment so this is the most important concern of every parents that they should provide a safe environment to their children a well settled a well uh, safe uh, environment they should not have any lack in that environment the parents are very much strict on providing the such kind of an environment to their children the next one is providing basic needs you know what are the basic needs then providing self esteem so this is nothing but it's a uh, the parent it is the duty of the parent uh, or the responsibility of the parent to make their child uh, self esteem that is self confident enough they should have uh, a standpoint or they should have their own esteem to perform the task and they should get that self identity with that so teaching children uh, morals and values that's very important so i think nowadays the parents are not spending much time on it that's why the their kids uh, amount of uh, number of kids are away from them and away from the social structure so teaching children morals and the values is very important then developing mutual respect okay that is also the parent could be the first the dad or mom could be the first teacher for every children so they have to uh, teach the parents should teach uh, what uh, uh, about the mutual respect so respect is nothing but it is a give and take policy something like that okay so if you respect others you will also get respected by others so that could be the lesson taught by the parents so when they uh, develop their children then providing effective and age appropriate discipline uh, that means it's a mm, very important thing that uh, according to their age the parents should uh, teach uh, the kids accordingly that means so when they are at the age of one what all things should be done by what all things the society expect from a child in that during that age period the parents or the dad or mom they should focus on that age group and they have to give only formation in that age group they should give the formation within that age group okay so the effective age appropriate discipline could be there that means when they face this society or when they are in the society the children are in the society they should uh, show a certain amount of discipline appropriate discipline that should be learned from the parents or from the family then be involved in the child's education so parents should find enough time to uh, assess and evaluate the education process of their child so they should know what they are learning from the school or from others okay their eyes should be open to their kids uh, always i should tell always not whenever they get time always uh, what they are learning if they learn some bad things from the school or from friends that will definitely influence the child in their age a very drastic change will occur due to that so being involved in child's education that's very important only the teacher has got the responsibility or the school people has got the responsibility no the parents also have equal responsibility in their education then the knowing the child by communicating with him or her okay so that's also uh, important so we have to know the child by communicating with him or her so we should know everything about the as a parent i should know everything about my child okay so i should not tell that if somebody asks about his nature i should not uh, tell that okay i have not known about it uh, i didn't know that he is like that no we have to communicate the child every day every day okay so there are some parents they are exercising this communication uh, practice with their children 
uh, after the schooling i used to uh, witness it and uh, the child is telling all the things all the detail is telling everything that happened in their uh, one day of life in the school or somewhere they have gone for a tour or something else the parents are very keen uh, to hear listen from the child that what all things are happening then the child has nothing to uh, hide from the parents the parents are also very transparent in their communication then parenting is uh, associated with the several rewards and demands okay what are the rewards and uh, demands so there could be a primary group ties and affection primary group ties and affection which refers uh, to a child's role in providing love and uh, companionship and acting as a buffer against the loneliness the parents have someone to love and return uh, love, to get the love returned okay so the primary group ties and affection means so this refers to a child's role in providing love and companionship and acting as a buffer against the loneliness so the parents have someone to love and to get left okay then uh, stimulation and the fun that is the other reward uh, the children bring stimulation they bring activity and joy to the life of the parents the parents feel proud and happy watching them grow okay then expansion of the self uh, the children are perceived uh, as fulfilling the human needs to find uh, meaning and purpose in their life and to attain a sense of immortality by having a part of the self life on after death so once the parents uh say goodbye to the world their children are still living and uh, it's a kind of expansion of the self that they have already acquired through their uh, lives of their children so the adult status and social identity Uh, the parenthood is seen as a sign of maturity and acceptance into adulthood then achievement competence and creativity so the producing a child that can give a parents a feeling of creativity and watching the child grow and develop contributes to a sense of parents competence then economic utility and security in old age the children they are very valued Uh, for the economic contribution that they can make to the family and the security they can offer parents in their old age i don't know all the children are uh, thoroughly doing all these things but still there are many uh, children they are doing uh, they are making sure the economic security when the their parents are in old age then morality that's also a reward the experience of raising children that is seen uh, as a process that helps them to be less selfish and more accommodating persons so that's a morality so they're getting a sense of morality uh, in that the experience of raising children is seen as a process that helps them to be less selfish and more accommodating persons okay then there are certain demands of parenting demands or concern we can call uh, okay so some researchers they have seen transition to parenthood as a crisis uh, we have already discussed about it uh, which creates a disruption in the pattern of affection and intimacy among the couple so certain demands are associated with parenting as per results thoughts are uh, mothers generally experience the physical tiredness and fatigue Uh, feeling edgy and emotionally upset so interruptions of sleep and rest uh, worry about personal appearance and loss of figure loss of beauty we can tell uh, the father's concern were interruptions in their sleep or rest suggestions from in-laws about the baby so increased financial needs so when a child grows you know Uh, we know that a lot of things to be taken care of and for that we should need uh, enough financial stability but increased financial needs are there the necessity to change plans so there could be some sort of divisions to uh, in the plan that already made by the father uh, when he concerns about the child so all these are some of the demands or concerns of parenting then stages of parenthood that is next 
Mm, so there are uh, four stages uh, have been proposed by the group for the advancement of psychiatry in 1973. So they divide these stages are anticipation, honeymoon, plate, and disengagement. So anticipation in this stage that involves the phase of preparing for the birth of a child. So they're anticipating a child. So the expectant parents think about and plan the ways of raising a child. So the ex parents who are expecting to have a child, they think about and plan the ways of raising, having a child. So they would imagine and place themselves into the parental position. Okay, uh, they will start to act as real parents uh, when they, even in the planning, uh, time so honeymoon period is there or honeymoon stage is there the second stage of parenthood starts after the birth of the first child this phase lasts for few months and the parents share the happiness of having a child they learn to make adjustments for the child develop attachment to the child their prime focus is on the child the parents also assume new roles during this phase that is called as a honeymoon child but we know the honeymoon something different okay uh, this stage span across the infancy to the teenage years, the plate stage. So the parents adapt their behavior according to uh, the growth and development of the child. Then the last stage, the last phase in parenting is uh, disengagement. So this stage involves the launching of the child from the family. So the child disengages from the family and may enter to a marital life and form a new marital subsystem. So there definitely a uh, sort of disengagement is happening. Then another author, Alan Galinsky, he has proposed to six stages of parenthood. Uh, that's like uh, the image, the nurturing stage, the authority stage, so the uh, interpretive stage, the interdependent stage, the departure stage, etc. So the others, uh, based on their uh, experiences and knowledge, they have given uh, some divisions or stages in parenthood. But the uh, uh, core message could be the same if you read all those things. But uh, it is good to have an understanding. So please find time uh, to read all those things. Then parenting styles, now we discuss here. So, uh, <clears throat> an author called Diana uh, Baumrind. So he has identified four patterns of parenting styles based upon uh, two aspects of parenting behavior. What are the two aspects are the control and warmth. Based on this, uh, one person has identified four patterns of parenting styles. The parental control uh, refers to the degree to which the parents manage their child's behavior or their children's behavior. From being very controlling to setting a uh, few rules and demands, the parental warmth refers to the degree to which parents are accepting and responsive for their children's behavior as opposed uh, to being unresponsive and rejecting. So when the two aspects of parenting behavior are combined in different ways, your primary parenting styles emerge. So it's a kind of, there are, we can see four styles commonly. First one is authoritarian parents. So these parents are highly demanding and directive, uh, but not responsive. Or they're very obedient and status oriented and expect their orders to be obeyed. Okay. Um, these parents provide well ordered and structured environments with uh, clearly stated rules. All those things should be followed by the children. So, these authoritarian parents can be divided into two types a non authoritarian directive who are directive but not intrusive or autocratic in their use of power and authoritarian directive who are highly intrusive, very strict. Then authoritative parents. The first one is authoritarian. Second one is authoritative parents. So they have both demanding and responsive. Okay. They monitor and impart clear standards of their children's conduct. 
they are very much vigilant they are very much conscious about their children's conduct they are assertive but not intrusive and restrictive so their disciplinary methods are supportive rather than punitive then the th next type of parenting style is intelligent parents so that is referred as permissive or non directive parents so they are more responsive than they are demanding so they are non traditional and lenient uh, do not require mature behavior allow considerable self regulations and avoid confrontation so these kind of parents or the parents follow in this style may be further divided into two types democratic parents who uh do lenient are more consentes engaged and are committed to the child and non directive parents then the last style is uninvolved parents so they are low in both responsiveness and demandingness so in extreme cases uh these parents style might encompass both rejecting or neglecting and neglectful parents although most parents of this type uh fall within the normal range so parenting style is a typology rather than a linear combination for of responsiveness and demandingness so each parenting style is more than and different from the sum of its parts so if there any parents are there please do conscious and uh, you just uh, be aware to which style you are following as a parent okay so the parenting skills that could be the next area that we have to discuss the parenting skills parent should have a lot of skills he should possess a lot of skills so since it is a process the parents change and grow to meet the needs of their children they have they should equip with themselves with a lot of skills so it is important to remember that change is gradual uh, for parents to learn new ways that can be scary difficult and even confusing for both the children and the adults so parents influence their children's behavior and children's accept parents behavior okay so it's a vice versa process so good parenting that is contrary to the general belief uh, it's a full time work okay therefore one of the major keys of good parenting is to know some mistakes that can be made by the parents and learn your lessons from it from it in cases of their other time so the parenting is a uh, skill and it's a hard one to learn at that time so some of the skills that a parent should possess are encouragement so here encouragement is a socialization skill uh, grounded in respect for self and others okay everyone benefits from this encouragement of others the parents also gain an awareness of their own strengths and abilities so when when the parents uh, they feel encouraged by others they feel better about themselves so when parents feel discouraged about the behavior of their children or the interactions within their families they may find it difficult to practice encouragement so encouragement should be uh, practiced then the next one is guidance guidance helps the parents uh, to redirect children's behavior or reform restructure children's behavior by using friendly positive messages such as try this do this or have this the uh, here the parents teach children to act in appropriate ways so the changing uh, type like they don't uh, leave your clothes on the floor or to pick up your clothes and put them in the hanger so all these things uh, are insisted by the parents and that gives the children the information that need to do uh, what is expected okay so it's a kind of, of prompt making them to uh, for a prompt response so the young children they will respond to similar but safer or more appropriate behavior alternatives with little guidance from the parents as children grow older so they continue to appreciate being told what they can do as opposed uh, to being told what they cannot do so here the guidance helps the parents set limits on children's behavior in constructive and appropriate ways then choices that's the next skill 
of a parenting uh, then choices build on the encouragement and guidance skills to develop cooperation between parent and the child so here parents are asked to be open minded and allow the children to be increasingly involved in determining uh, the resolution to a shared problem so this is a skill to use when the children can help with the decision or a plan uh, the solution so by giving the parents way to share the responsibility with the children uh, choices can reduce the parents anxiety about uh, feeling that they must control every situation so they should be able to give a lot of alternatives uh, before the children and they should make the children to choose the best among that so they make them efficient enough to choose the best what they need okay so choices are uh, a negotiation skill that respects the rights of both the parents and the uh, child uh, and the children so sometimes it is hard to allow children a voice uh, in the process so some parents find it uncomfortable or difficult to understand how valuable it is to do so at other times the parents undervalue their own responsibility in the decision making process and let their children have more freedom than is comfortable for the uh, parent or appropriate for the child so sense of freedom is there then self control that could be the next skill uh, when parents effectively handle their own emotions they teach uh, their children to do the same okay the way uh, parents choose to handle themselves in explosive situations models ways for their children to behave when angry or upset so self control that is something all parents need okay from their children so self control that could be a skill that's a skill to help the parents to avoid acting hurtfully towards their children so by gaining self control before deciding how to act with their children the parents can interact with their children in a helpful way so even during stressful moments so instead of getting angry when a child commits some wrong attitude definitely uh, we have to control the things and we have to practice the self control so that the child will be also learn the same from us uh, when they deal a situation then respecting feelings so respecting feelings is an empathy building skill so we are respect the feeling of others that's very important so it helps people acknowledge that everyone has feelings okay usually a wide range of them should have some sort of feelings sometimes these feelings are so strong they become confusing or overwhelming so usually it helps to talk about these emotions with another person who will listen respectfully so respecting feelings means that's a skill to practice giving attention to another person and listening for feelings so uh, that feeling can convey a message that okay there are people to uh, listen there are people to help or there are people Uh, who can trust in your relationship so respecting feeling is also considered as a reflecting skill okay so it gives children the chance to think uh, think out loud so it teaches the children to respect themselves and to respect the feelings of others so it acknowledges the importance of their feelings their right to these feelings and their values as a human beings so each and every human being should practice this uh skill that is respecting the not only the parents but still uh since parents are the first teachers the child children will get everything from their uh face and from their dos actions so next one is availability the availability of parents at times when a child need uh that is very essential so the parents also should make the child feel their availability so when the child is in a trouble situation so then and there the child should feel that okay my parent my father or my mother both of them are very much available to help me to come out of this so that should be a great confidence or a trust for the child to develop uh, in the their coping mechanism Uh, to deal with the uh, difficult situations so the appreciation should be uh, sorry availability that parents also need to make children feel that they are important 
beings to them so spending a period of quality time with the children is very important that makes them more comfortable and secure they should uh, spending with the child uh, definitely creates a feel that okay it's very they are very secure my parents are there for me always so that's a great security that the child can ever have so it might be having a short work with them uh, watch their favorite program with them on television or reading a book with them or accompany them where they want to go etc then appreciation that could be the next one next skill so this is another technique of good parenting so this leads to a good behavior in children it is very motivating to appreciate the children uh, the appreciation uh, should be uh, immediate and consistent so that assist the children to distinguish between the wrong uh, and the right thing so expected behaviors and the unwanted behaviors etc so the potentials of being good behavior continue to show uh, show forth in them and when they are appreciated the more on their good behavior so we ha should have that sense of appreciation we should appreciate when they do something good and really great then we move on to the next one that is acceptance both parents and uh, young children uh, love to be accepted the children will develop a level of self worth and uh, rate high uh, level of self esteem when they are accepted so acceptance in good uh, parenting makes the children feel being secured then affection so everybody wants to be loved uh, most uh, especially the children okay children always look for means by which they can be loved by their parents and the outsiders or the relatives the children always long to be loved by their parents the fundamental and principle of a durable relationship between parent and children is the pure love okay unconditional love we can call then therefore loving the children and letting them know that you love them is very important then we have to show the love a feeling of being loved and having a special position in parents life fosters uh, the holistic development of the children so love could be expressed by the physical ways of hugging uh, kissing etc and through verbal means like telling that i love you okay i love you means yeah, the parent should tell to the child and the child should, uh, should tell to the parent that i love you it's a very meaningful thing and that gives a lot of uh, uh, encouragement motivation and life to the people who experiencing all this then creating uh, sorry uh, listening that could be the next one uh, so listening we know in case work we were uh, discussing about the importance of listening just as that more than that in parenthood the listening to children really stresses to the to them that they are important so it should give, give a feel can we feel that okay they are very much important no matter how strange or ridiculous it may be listening to the child's stories their ideas and complaints that strengthen the relationship and boost their self esteem with the uh, society or the social system and with the life so creating safety feeling very important skill children are defenseless in life and things they do not understand or are scary to them may easily scare them so comforting the child at every stage in life will provide them with the security that they need so they need to know uh, the availability of parents to protect them whenever they want whenever they are in a dangerous situation so they also need to see that the parents are sensitive to their needs and have taken steps to protect their children then provide order and organization that is another skill so creating a structure in the life uh, in other words we can tell so children need a regular and daily schedule so they need to have meals naps and bed times at consistent times throughout the day so we are making them to follow a habit or daily habitual uh, things that could be done uh, that should uh, make them order and organized life so when they come home they need to do their homework and their uh, course be before they can play so before they go to the bed uh, then they need to take a bath 
brush their teeth and get their school supplies ready first. So when they get up in the morning, they need to eat the breakfast, get dressed, uh, all those things, daily activities, uh, then get their belongings together and then they can use any extra time they have for their hobbies or their leisure time uh, spending. Okay, all these are the parenting skills. Then, uh, characteristics of a good parenting. Say, I love you to the children, show physical affection, listening, use eye contact, uh, pray daily, availability, be grateful. So, all these things can uh, make the parent a really, uh, uh, really model parent, a hero, father or a mother to the children. Then punishment and uh, uh, disciplining. So understanding the difference between discipline and uh, uh, punishment that can transform parents' approach to the child's misbehavior. What could be the purpose here to purpose? Then the punishment and the discipline. So to inflict penalty for an offense. Okay. Then to train for correction and maturity. That would be the discipline there. Then the focus is uh, past misdeeds. Then the future correct acts could be the discipline. Then what could be the attitude? The attitude is uh, hostility, uh, hostility and frustration on the part of the parent. That could be the punishment. Then love and concern, frustration on the part of the parent. Then resulting emotion in child, fear and guilt. That uh, a sense of security can be assured there. Role of adults in society. Certain uh, social roles are there, so be attentive to all problems of the society, show respect uh, of everyone's view, encourage uh, pro-social behavior, love for society and human approach, self-discipline and responsibility in handling pu uh, pub pubic property, sorry, public pu property, then promotion of a healthy society by promoting humanitarian and eternal values, then family promotion measures, then special concern towards senior citizens, enthusiasm and optimism in professional spheres, then courage to do right things at right time, listening to the problems of young mind with care, be more active about environmental issues. All these are some of the important role of adults in the uh, society, especially in the social context. Okay. So we move to the next slide, that is the political roles are there. So we have to understand and we have to know the meaning of all these roles. So we have a proper political awareness and coordinate with the government to fight against all the national problems. So politics, we should know the definition of politics, then only we can act in that way. So the active participation in public debate on civil issues could be there. Then we have to pay tax. Uh, properly and take responsibility of the tax paid and its expenditure as a citizen of the country. So membership in a national or local level political organization is also a political role. So promote role of vigilance and watchdog in the values of political leaders and promote political participation to develop values of the democratic life. Then there could be some financial roles, the roles in production, distribution and consumption, role in savings and investment, role in innovation and advancement of technology, role of participation in economic planning, uh, role in encouraging youth entrepreneurships through various financial plans and packages, a role of promotion in sustainable development, role in promotion of welfare measures. So the next role that is categorized in relig as religious roles. So each and every adult should show respect for all the religions of the society, cordial relationships between the different religious leaders. So cordial relationship could be there. Then participation in religious activities, 
then initiating his own religious associations and groups, a vigilance on self-intelligence and the misuse of religion, to be alert on uh, communization, communalization and segmentation of the society on the basis of religion. The best can become the worst religion, which stands for the noblest of values that can degrade itself to unimaginable depths through the superstition. So we should understand what religion is. So only during the uh, adult age, people are becoming, uh, have a strong feeling towards these uh, religious aspects. Uh, okay, till adolescence, they are not much serious about all these practices and all. That. So we have to respect the religion. We have to show the respect of all the religions of the society and we have to live according to the religious practices where I belong to. Okay, so that shows uh, our spirituality and that also conveys sense of our morality. Then we have got the cultural lords as well as the promotion of uh, social organization, accept and utilize uh, the customs and uh, traditions with reasons. Then the role of promotion of mother tongue, appreciation of other languages and access the usage of common languages. Then foster the growth of uh, arts and literature and uh, critical assessment of it. So the socialize the younger generation and its members to conform to the accepted standards of behavior and the agencies of social control like law, education, public opinion, then propaganda, customs, folkways, and most religion, morality, and sanctions. So the culture always shows that uh, the identity, uh, it plays a vital role as an identity card. So when I am from a culture, that shows that where I belong to. So we have to socialize the young generation and its members to confirm that the, uh, there is a well-accepted uh, standard of their behavior uh, in the form that is very much united with the culture. So help to develop values like love, humanitarianism, charity, justice, democracy, liberty, freedom, individual rights, hard work, self-discipline, service, respect to uh, respect then tolerance, acceptance, nationalism, patriotism, civic responsibility, etc. Then we have to have the role of a critical analysis. That is, we have to critically analyze the beliefs and ideologies. So we have to avoid the uh, superstitious activities that is uh, uh, surrounding us. And all those are some sort of uh, evils, Okay, social evils. We have to consider in that way. So we have to be aware of all those things and we have to or we should be aware of the media and critically analyze the news and the use of information to the uh, God democracy along with the watchdog function of media. The media should stand for the truth always and that should uh, make the people aware of the uh, betterment that is happening for them. So that should convey only uh, good news is not the false news. The right news should be shared with the media. So we have to critically analyze and reflect on the media and we have to aware of the media uh, influences. Okay, all these are some of the uh, various types of uh, multiple roles that uh, an adolescent should play. Okay. So any doubts? Any doubts? Here so far. Okay, so then we conclude the third block and we move on to the last block in the uh, area, in the text. So I am going to share the screen of the next block. Okay, so here we go. So we are moving to the next block that is detailed description about the old age okay so we'll be getting enough idea and information about the old age so we can have uh, we can just begin it today within the remaining time and uh, we will continue after the uh, possible uh, topics to be covered now and the rest of the things will be taken tomorrow so uh, what's your concept about old age?
just begin with some sort of discussion otherwise it's boring that always i am telling something so what's your uh, uh, idea about all days what are the challenges that they face or what are the problems that they face in all days so what could be the role of a social worker uh, to do with the all days people for their betterment what are the struggles of all days so what is the nature of all days people in this uh, contemporary world please do comment about something what is your understanding about the life of all days in our surroundings are they very happy what is the current situation so it is nothing but it's a retirement time okay illness sorry yes time of lot of illness and healthy issues good a uh, physical yeah health issues uh, financial issues uh, financial issues emotional issues uh, family issues uh, acceptance issues uh, that, you know about the health and uh, fear of death uh, loneliness what uh, mm. are the things about this mm. okay so why there are a lot of old age homes are functioning in our places what could be the reason in mohara we can see most of the houses only old age people are there mm. uh, children and grandchildren are they are moving to some other countries for their work purpose mm. so if it goes like this if we examine that now uh, there are for from my own experience i am telling that in my uh, village or in my place where i belong to uh, in that context i should tell that in most of the houses as you said the young people they are leaving the parents alone in their home and they are migrating okay so that is because of various issues like they are not getting proper job here no adequate facilities are there no recognition is there so the payment is very low the job opportunities are very low compared to the overseas uh, life okay therefore they are migrating for their own uh, life at all but still they are keeping their family their parents their old age uh, parents are here uh, in their a big house okay so uh, uh, gradually i think that in every where there will be more old age homes i tell you that more old age homes uh, they are living under their own roof it is not uh, run by any organizations or something else but there will be more old age homes than the family that we have now okay so that is a uh, phenomenon that is going to happen soon uh, it is very strange so then if it's so definitely load of problems they have to face the old age people uh they are very 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 dependent in their nature as somebody was telling uh, they are having lot of problems to solve that problem definitely they need to depend someone that means to their children but it is not possible almost all the time okay so they are in a world or they are going to face a lot of challenges in the uh, upcoming time i'm sure in the future so can we uh, can we just uh, divide it into two categories saying that you know one section would be going to the old age home because of uh, crisis mm. what whatever reason that would be mm. and uh, what i've observed uh, the second portion is mm. uh, they uh, you know are reaching out to good old age homes just because of uh, loneliness and you know to be in uh, company with others Hmm. so uh, old age home nowadays yes you see people you know where you know they're not treated well by their families or kids or whatever and uh, nowadays you see another set uh, you know where there are all the facilities and uh, old age people it's kind of a retirement plan for them hmm. and they they plan out their old age thing in a good old age home hmm. where they pay their stay so that they have people around so uh that would be coming out of loneliness uh, i suppose so that, that yeah. that's what i take on yeah that's true but the thing is that so here the all age people are not 
getting their rights to be fulfilled i think because recently there were some legal aid has been promoted for the well being of the older people because uh, if a, a son be neglecting the parents to take care of them in uh, when they are getting old the parents can have the provision to file a case against him recent experiences shows that okay so the legal aid is there but previously it was not there you know what the situation is that i just wanted to mark that okay the situation is like that but when we think of other countries the old age people and the senior citizens they are getting very good care a good standard of life you know here from india many youngsters are migrating as care workers to uk canada uh, to the so and so countries you know why they're getting well paid there so they are hesitating or they feel some problem to look after their parents here but they are going they are migrating to other nations and they are caring the senior citizens there in the care homes so where they are getting well paid per hour they are getting maybe 10 to 12 pounds see the change boils, that's boils happening down, boils down to Uh, yeah. money and uh, a property because you know what, what i personally feel is uh, i've you know uh, observed a number of cases in which you know uh, parents if they have given everything to their kids mm. uh, majorly you know the kids don't uh, treat the parents well uh, whereas on the other hand you know if among brothers or whatever you know you don't you don't give them anything and you just tell them that you know till the time i am alive uh, you know whosoever takes the best care of me is going to get the rest i have one one side depart uh, then see how well yeah, that's a traditional <laughs> thing that's a traditional yeah. practice uh, uh, many of the people are following but but i am talking about some uh, middle or average standard of living uh, families i am talking about them so a lot of things are there okay so this is something very uh, Uh, what do you call attention seeking area and we have to stress our focus on this as well now social work has got a particular uh, 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 intervention strategy with these uh, old age people geriatrics so in most of the universities in their course they have taken a paper called gerontology social work practice with geriatrics gerontological social work so that is very useful to take care and to fulfill the needs of the all days people but here the situation demands it that's why uh, very uh, in the um, uh, the last uh, uh, revision of the syllabus in mo- almost all the universities has restructured the course it was there in the beginning as an introduction but now seriously they have taken it into uh, the account and they have taken it as a particular subject gerontological social work that is included in the social work practice okay so uh, realizing all these things we can understand the specialities or the nature of this socio i mean uh, this uh, old age time in the developmental stage okay then so the socio demographic situation of elderly in india we can have a look so old age is a natural part of the life cycle it is considered as the closing period in the life span we can also uh, uh, understand old age in another way that is it is the second childhood okay so they are considered as the children because they are totally uh, dependent in nature so the number and proportion of elderly people are increasing fast as compared to the general population so this phenomenon commonly termed as a graying of the nation or population aging varies from country to country so every year around 9 million older persons are being added to the world's population so it's a huge uh, amount or a huge statistics right every year around 9 million older persons are being added to the world's population so as a result so there is a new phase of life after retirement known as third age so um, in a uh, uh, 
outside of india we can see load of retirement houses okay but slowly in india also it is coming to uh, practice uh, coming to a practice that there are some retirement houses if you go to kochi or ernakulam you can see i don't know about other because i've been to one or two retirement houses that's a uh, uh they are spending their time after their retirement so that is uh, well expensive really expensive to stay there only economically stable and uh, those who have a uh, sound economic background can uh, get into it others will not be able to okay so they have got their good structure they are well organized the system the amenities the infrastructure that they get is really good uh, so in their third age they are enjoying with the possible ways that they have by their own money okay nobody is giving it but their own money because they foresee things should be like that and maybe their children busy with their own life they do not want to these parents do not want to disturb them uh, for anything so they are having keeping the love and uh, uh, affection in their heart they are living in the uh, retirement houses so till uh, a century back we were living in a world of children and now it is rapidly becoming a world of old age people okay it's very strange okay so it is projected that in next 50 years there may be more grandparents than the grandchildren surprising information so in another 15 years there will be the majority of the population could be the old age our grandparents there were a less number of grandchildren sir like japan and china <laughs> isn't it sir <laughs> yeah uh, more or less correct but not completely because they are also they are giving uh, they are having a good uh, amount of grandchildren as well okay so if we take if you just google you can understand that they are about their population but uh india has crossed to china now do you know that yes sir yes yeah. yeah very good okay so we get updated with that then the concept of aging so what does it mean by aging what we have to understand is the aging is denoted by a number of changes like graying of hair uh wrinkling of skin stooping of the gait then fading of eyesight and hearing then curtailment of the independence of uh, functioning and imposition of retirement or superannuation by the society so all together we can tell that we are getting away from all these things okay some sort of physical beauty that is losing so old age could be a time of lot of uh, losses we can tell in other worlds okay so on the contrary the gerontal gerontologist and the human development professionals so they consider that aging is a process of maturation so this is the highest stage of maturation so it is regardless of uh, the chronical sorry chronological age uh it stands starts at the conception and eventually ends with the death okay so gerontologists and human development professionals they comment that they consider that it's a process of maturation so it is regardless of the chronological age so uh, what could be the life expectancy the usual life expectancy that a human being has what would be the last survey that i uh, studied uh, in mm. india for men it's uh, 69 and for women it's 70. 70 we can make it into 70 70 for women it's 74 yeah so there uh, due to the lifestyle diseases and uh, other severe health conditions it happens like that okay the census shows that then the criteria of aging what could be the criteria so <clears throat> strehler a gerontologist as well as a writer he has proposed four uh, criteria of aging first thing is it is universal it occurs in all members of the 
population so can anyone free from this uh, aging nobody can so by having a uh, well maintained health a good ordered life organized life we can extend our life okay to sometimes 18 19 and god also should be uh, should show his mercy on us to continue and to have a longest life in the there are people they live till 100 120 okay years of their life in this world but we have to remember that it is universal it occurs in all members of the population then it is progressive a continuous process aging is very progressive and it is a continuous process it is intrinsic to the organism we can it is very uh, uh, drastic change it's uh, we cannot free from this it is very intrinsic to the organism so it is degenerative okay so health and old age so in old age we can have a lot of health issues so health is a natural condition of human life and it is a, a bright light and finds crucial place in universal declaration of human rights and millennium development goals so both these things focus health as a uh, right basic right so it is a holistic concept that results from the balanced diet adequate intake of fluids physical exercise and happiness and contentment so to make everyone healthy and to have a healthy life uh, in community health social work has got a a uh, role that is to in both in community and in uh, men, uh, mental health uh, social workers have got to spread health education so we are going to be the advocates we have going to the uh, prophets of health education uh, in the current world so we have got a good role to play to provide health education then aging refers to the cumulative progressive and degenerative uh, changes that occur over a period of life course so it means that the natural process of aging is associated with a decline in specific functional abilities then the anatomical and physiological changes so uh, urinary system it includes the urinary system gastro intestinal system then respiratory system it is something related to the medical explanation and the biological anatomical uh, explanation okay so just for information i am telling respiratory system then cardiovascular system brain nervous system muscles sensory organs vision hearing taste smell touch and pain all these things are there all these changes are there in the anatomical and physiological area then there could be some sort of uh, psychosocial change titled becoming introverted and self centered losing hope exclusion of stimuli defense mechanism uh, conservation of psychic energy dealing with ambiguity change in self concept awareness of limited time behavioral rigidity then purposelessness wisdom all these change are happening in the old age time okay we will explain it in the next class one by one so now i think let's stop for uh, and we can spend the time for some sort of discussions if you have got any uh, doubts